Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Team Lux Platinum training. This training takes place every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I want to thank all of you for showing up for your success. Um, usually we either have a topic, the things we talk about are either topics that you all bring to my attention that you need training on, or it may be things that I've learned that I want to share with you, or sometimes we just do a Q&A and just whatever comes up, we talk about it. But tonight we do have a special agenda with some things that we want to go over with you. And to help me with tonight's meeting, I want to introduce to you our two-star director here out of Space Coast, Florida. This young lady is also the MVP of my organization. She works this business on a full-time basis. Her organization makes up more than two-thirds of my team. She's leading a team of almost over 700 people. Um, I want to bring to the line two-star director, Camet Turner, also my very best friend. Camet, have you made it to the line? Well, good evening, everybody. I have made it to the line. Thank you for that gracious introduction, Tanisha. And for those of you that don't know, which you all should know, Tanisha is my uh, personal sponsor who um, brought me into the business. She is my two-star director. Um, I am direct to her and literally a sneeze away from becoming a three-star director as well. So if it wasn't for her, none of us would be here. So we'll start there. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing awesome. We just came back from an amazing event yesterday, uh, Super Sunday in Orlando. What did you think of Super Sunday? It was an amazing, amazing event. Always a pleasure to hear from the top leaders because they always have some nuggets that they want to drop. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the first nugget is we're going to share with you a training uh, that Mr. Orlando Moore, our three-star director, um, shared with us, which was phenomenal, phenomenal. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Cam, Matt, so you can take it. All right. So one of the things that he talked about was, are you serious about your business or how serious are you about your business? And one of the things that the one takeaway that I got from that was that um, which makes perfect sense, right? Whenever you're talking to somebody about the business, um, are you serious about it or are you giggly, right? And when you're giggly, which was another thing that Mr. Bradley says, when you're giggly, they don't take, nobody takes anything that you're saying seriously, right? So when you're talking about business, it needs to be business. So you got to have your business face on, not your flirty face, not your um, smiley, smiley face, or talking and laughing and talking about the business. Business is business. At the end of the day, you want to get to your point in and out. And the topic that um, Mr. Moore talked about was serious. And he literally broke down what serious means for him. Um, and I'm going to go over it for those of you that are taking notes. So the S in serious means the sacrifice. Like, um, what are you willing to sacrifice um, to be successful in your business, right? And um, the E is for engage. Are you engaged? Meaning, are you plugged into the calls that take place that corporate has um, set up for everybody? Are you uh, plugging in? Are you going to the meetings? Are you on these trainings that are provided to help grow your business? Right? So you got to stay engaged. Engage is how Tanisha and I were able to build such an amazing team of champions is because we were on every call. We made that sacrifice leaving our corporate job nine to five or nine to three, it's six to three and literally on the road driving to Tampa or Orlando or uh, even as far as Miami for, um, or Jacksonville to make that sacrifice because we were so hungry for the success, right? Um, the R in serious is relentless. How relentless are you? And he didn't really touch too much on that topic. So I won't either. We'll say that for, that's another, that's a whole nother, hour of training right there, right? The I is importance. How important is your business for you? How important are you, how important is this business for you and your family? Like, what are you willing to do, right? It, and it all falls back into exactly what we talked about, right? What does it mean to you? And O, overcome. And this was a huge one that he talked about because he talked about his twin sister 
um, being diagnosed with stage three cancer, I believe, and, you know, breast cancer. And instead of just sitting there and literally holding her hand and saying, all right, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. They say, how about we overcome this and win on this, you know, and, and, you know, fast forward to today, she was able to ring that bell that she didn't have, she was successful with her chemo treatments and so forth and so on. So you have to overcome things, right? We don't want to dwell on anything, um, right? We can't change what happened in the past. We just have to take what's for today and move forward. So you have to overcome any obstacles, right, that gets in the way because we know life is going to happen and we are going to have to overcome those obstacles. Um, the U is for unstoppable, right? You have to be unstoppable in your business. Nobody should be in your way. You have to know what your goals are, what you want to achieve, because the only person that can achieve it is you, right? So you have to be unstoppable. Nobody gets in my way of, of my success, right? I had that discussion a little bit earlier with Tanisha. I said, business is business. It's not personal. It's business at the end of the day, right? And significance, which is the last S for serious. And significance is you have to make a significant um, mind frame. You have to have a significant mind frame in this business because your mind rules everything, right? If your mind tells you one thing, then that's exactly what you're going to go after. So you have to think like a winner, believe you're a winner, believe you're a doer, and you have to actually go and do it. Um, and I thought that him literally breaking down the meaning of serious was literally serious. Like, right. It was, it was so, it was so amazing because he hit a lot of key points as far as, you know, when we talk to prospects, um, one, a lot of us are afraid to approach somebody Two, many of us don't know what to say. We fumble, but I always tell everybody, it's just a conversation. Nobody's better than you. You're just talking to another person, just as you do when you typically go out anywhere else. It's no different. And then you ease your way into what it is that you're trying to say. Because first of all, you should be listening more than you speak anyway. Listen to what their need is so that you can help to feed that need, right? And um, you got to be serious about it, right? I know a lot of us, right, we joke around. I know, I know right, I'm, the, I'm the queen of jokes all day, every day. But when it comes to my business and I'm talking to a prospect or a, business, a potential business partner, I'm very serious about what I'm saying and it's no time for joking around. The minute they start with the joking around or him and Han and going left field, I'm done. Done with the conversation and I'm walking away because I don't have time. That's taking up more of my time. Tanisha, back to you. Thank you so much, Kamet. That was amazing. And there were several takeaways um, that I got from Mr. Moore's training when he talked about sacrifices. One of the things he said is that my sacrifices pay me more than my excuses. And I can definitely relate to that. We all say we want, you know, to change our zip codes. We want to provide a better lifestyle for our children. We want, we want, we want from this opportunity, but what are you willing to sacrifice to get it? And that is what separates the successful people from the unsuccessful people in this business. You have to be willing to give something in order to get something. You cannot make withdrawals from this business if you do not make any deposits into your business. So remember, your sacrifices will always pay you more than your excuses. Um, again, engaging in all areas of your business. Relentless in your pursuit of prospecting. Be relentless in your pursuit of prospecting. At the end of the day, that is how you're going to grow your business. So you cannot allow anything stop you from prospecting. You have to be relentless with that. Set your daily goal for how many people you're going to expose to the business and be relentless about those goals. Don't let anything deter you. Um, Overcoming all obstacles, unstoppable. Oh, I love what he said about unstoppable, Kamet. He said, a lot of times the inner me is the enemy. It's not your sponsor, what your sponsor did or did not do. It's not what your director did or did not do. A lot of times it's the stuff you're telling yourself that causes the problem. So the inner me 
is the enemy. So you have to always keep your mind clear and keep your eye on the prize and be unstoppable with your goals and everything that you're pursuing. And uh, the big takeaway I got from significance was that he said, success is what happens to you, but significance is what happened through you. You know, I had, I have had some success in this business, right? I was able to walk away from my corporate job. I was able to get the director jacket. I was able to retire my husband. So those, those things can be looked at as successes. But the significance is that I have impacted almost a thousand families through this opportunity. That's significant. So success is what happens to you, but significance is what happens through you. So I thought that was pretty, pretty, um, pretty heavy duty there. Um, the next topic that we want to talk about, and this was also brought up at um, the blackout event, is dressing for success. So Kim, Matt, I'm going to call you back up to uh, go back and forth with me on this because we've been in this business for two and a half years. We've seen a lot of things, but one of the things that I want everyone to, hold on, someone's, please mute your line. I'm gonna unmute you and mute everyone. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bradley has made it very, very clear that we are to, this is to be a Wall Street opportunity. He wants all of us to dress as if we are on Wall Street. And so what that means is that we, whatever, if you would wear it to the club, don't wear it to the meeting. Kim Matt, what do you say about that? If you can wear it to the club, don't wear it to the meeting. Well, first of all, um, I won't give my two cents because I already told you that, uh, you know, if you bring me up on this topic, it's, it, it'll go, it'll go completely left. I want it to go left because we want to <laughs> set everyone, we want to set everyone up for success. And as leaders, it is our responsibility to tell our team what they need to hear and not what they want to hear. And honestly, for a lot of people, this is their very first time owning a business. For a lot of people, these are their first times ever going to a business meeting as a business owner. And even though I know everybody knows, uh, Kimet tells it straight up, no chaser, but you know, it is our responsibility to, I think they need to hear the, the real thing. Let's have a real, can we have a locker room conversation? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on this, on this team call tonight, this team training, are you guys okay with us having locker room? I want you to comment in the chats because you know I want, I always want this to be interactive. I never want this to be um, just the leaders talking to you. I want us to, you know, be on the same page with this because, you know, you guys, this, this is our tribe. This is a tribe that we're in and we, we need to look out for each other. So, Kemet, we got the green light from the team straight up no chaser locker room conversation let's talk about it mr bradley wants us to be wall street and i say what if you will wear it to the club you should not wear it to the business opportunity meeting go ahead cam matt take it away all right so to piggyback off that when you say wear it to the club first of all it has to fit you if you even wearing it to the club so let's start there right ladies um, some of us are a little big busted up at the top. We don't need to see it, right? Keep that, keep that for, keep that for the bedroom, right? Cover it up. You want to dress for success, right? You want to be able to, that when you walk into the room, you want them to know that you are here because you refuse to lose and you choose to win, right? If the, if the, the, the skirts, the skirts should not be all the way up to your hoo-ha. Don't want to see that either right? Be professional about it. You, you are a business owner. So come in as if you own the bank, not like you need a loan from the bank, right? We don't want to see 
um, that, you know, stuff that you, you, you done did your Saturday spring cleaning and then now you're just going to jump in your car and drive to the meeting. No, be, be professional about it, right? Dress for success. Um, for the gentleman, right, it should always be a shirt. Most of the time, if you can, a blazer. We're not telling you guys to go out and buy suits. That's, exact, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is you can dress it up, right? You can definitely dress it up. A shirt. If you want to wear a tie, knock yourself out. Some people do, some people don't. And slacks. It should never be jeans or sneakers. You got you to gotta dress like you are literally here for business. If you were going on an interview, you wouldn't go dress in, you know, rag down jeans and a t-shirt or, or tank top. Or as we saw last night, a, a young lady who had on a dress that was way too short and way too tight with the one thing that they talked about at this meeting is open toe shoes. They don't want to see the toes. Keep the toes covered. So get a right, get a nice pair of closed toe shoes and stuff like that. That's what is Wall Street. That is professional. Planet Marketing says every single week you get to write your own check and Planet Marketing will write it. Right? You get to create your own check and Planet Marketing will will definitely write that. So make sure that when you walk in, they say, damn, she looks like a million dollars. Damn, he looks like a million dollars. Not, oh my God, they look like, you know, they need, we need to give them some money, right? You be, be professional about it. It's your business and people will respect that. Imagine walking through the airport instead of having on um, slacks or tights and a t-shirt or something, but you're walking through dressed in, whether it's a suit or business, you know, business suit for the ladies, business suit for the men, everybody's head is going to turn. They're going to be like, hmm, I wonder what they do. And that's a conversation piece. Right? It's a conversation piece. Would you agree, Tanisha? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They say dress for the position that you want. If you want to be a director, then dress like a director. If you want to be a six figure income earner, dress like a six figure income earner. If you want to be a millionaire, dress like a millionaire because you never know who you're going to come across. I remember hearing a story, uh, Mr. Bradley telling a story, how just like most of us, you know, typically will do, when he would take a flight, he would, you know, be in a sweatsuit or whatever. But then he realized he's gonna try to prospect the person next to him. So how serious is that person going to take him if he's saying, I can change your life, I can help you become a millionaire, and then he's looking like he just came from the gym. Not a good look. So he said, you know, once he learned, you know, when you know better, you do better. And so now, no matter what, if he is on a flight, he's always in a suit, no matter what time. If it's a red eye, late night, whatever, he's always in a suit because he never knows who he's going to come across that he's going to end up prospecting. So we have to have that same mentality. We want to model what it looks like. I know I've been totally guilty of, you know, leggings and flip-flops when I'm going to the airport because I don't want to have to take my shoes off at TSA and this, that, and the other. But I, I also recognize now that I got, I got to step my game up if I want to take my business to the next level. As Mr. Bradley constantly reminds us, none of us have made any money yet. He says that to Shedrick. None of us have made any money yet. And so we all have to get serious about our business. And that includes even webinars. Some of you may not realize this. And just because, and just in case you don't know, when you're on a webinar, your camera's on. I can see everything that's going on in your house, your background what you got on your head, your makeup. I see all of that. And I don't know if you guys know this, but these recordings are saved on my YouTube channel. So what are people going to say when they see you on my YouTube channel and then you maybe down the line go prospecting them? You have to always be on your A game. Always be on your A game because you never know. Even when Kemet and I go to uh, some of these business opportunity meetings, we're a lot of times thinking we're going to go and sit in the crowd and you know just enjoy the meeting. And before we even get one foot in the door, they're asking us to present. 
And imagine if that night I decide to show up to the opportunity meeting with a short, short skirt, my chest hanging out, you know, clothes not fitting right, shoes, open toe shoes, needing a pedicure, and they're asking me to present in the front of the room. That is a no go. You have to always be ready always be ready and always be in serious mode when it comes to your business if you want people to take you serious about your business. Kamet, anything else on that? Nope, I think we pretty much covered it. And I, oh, I, yes, I do want to say that the Team Lux yesterday, we represented, we were all dressed appropriately. So shout out to everybody who showed up yesterday. Awesome. Yes, yes. Shout out um, George, Lily, Mildred, Nick, Cynia. Cynia's new business partner, I think his name was James, and Natalie. Yep. All for showing up. Um, I'm looking at the comments here, and Maria said, this is so relevant. I have actually stopped myself from talking to a prospect because I wasn't dressed professionally. That is awesome, Maria. And I've done the same thing myself. There, you know, you know, it's always that, oh, let me run to the to the grocery store or to Walmart. I gotta grab one thing. And you know, you didn't plan on leaving your house for the day. So you you were dressed for I'm staying in the house and now you gotta run out. And then you run out and then you see someone you want to prospect. I've done the same, <laughs> the same exact thing, Maria. You have to stop yourself and say, is this person going to take me serious the way I'm dressed right now? Or, you know, do I just let this one go? And then maybe now you, you know, make it a point to not leave your house, not ready to do business, no matter what. Right? So that's the other alternative. Okay. So last but not least, um, oh, one more thing that Mr. Bradley said that I wanted to share with you that I got out of the meeting. He says, he sells the dream and not the travel. He said, I, I don't sell ITAs. I'm not selling travel agencies. He says, I sell the dream. And that is what people buy. You know, he gets people, he finds out what they need. You know, if they're in debt, he's selling them the dream of what it looks like to be debt free. He's selling them the dream of being retired from their corporate job. He's selling them the dream of being a six-figure income earner. He's not selling them a travel agency. He's not selling them an ITA. So I want all of you to think about the conversations that you are having with your prospects. Are you selling a travel agency or are you selling them the dream? And the only way that you know how to sell them the dream is if you're having a conversation with them and, and asking the right questions. What is it that they need? What is the need that you're trying to fill? What is the problem that you're trying to solve? What is the hurt you are trying to heal? And once you find out what those things are, then you can sell them the dream and not the travel agency. Does that make sense to everyone? Maria says, yes. Thank you, Maria. Nick says, sell the dream, not a business. Right, Nick. Mildred said, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Katrina says, yes. April says, yes. Janine, Kayla says, yes. Martina, thank you. Natalie says, yes. Joy, Debbie Williams, thank you. All say yes. Okay, great, great. Okay. Um, I want you guys to write this down. And I want you to always, always remember this because the times that we're living in right now are gonna get worse before they get better. And I want you guys to always, I want you to keep your blinders on and not get caught up with distractions. Keep your blinders on and don't get caught up in distractions. Stay out of the drama zone so that you can stay in your money zone. There's a lot of drama that's going on right now, um, you know, with this new travel company that's coming out and, you know, people from over here leaving to go over there. So what? 
Who cares? It does not matter. If someone leaves this business and they go on to do something else or quit and whatever, how is that helping you get to your next level? It's not. It's just drama. Stay out of the drama zone so that you can stay in your money zone. What people think about you and what you're doing is none of your business. No more than whatever they are doing or not doing is none of your business. Stay focused. I promise you, Kemet and I, for the first two years in this business, we ran like our hair was on fire. And there was no room for drama. Why? Because we both hated our job. We were thankful we had a job. Let me be clear. We were very thankful that we had a job. But neither one of us liked the company or the people we work with or the policies and procedures they had in place. And we ran like our hair was on fire for two years straight. There was no room for us to get caught up in any drama. Was drama happening? Absolutely. You cannot avoid that. But you have to learn how to put your attention on your business and not let anything interfere with that. I remember uh, Kim at the first, well, actually the, the last of the second years, the latter part of that, there was a lot of stuff going on in the news. I'm sure you guys remember, there was a lot of like police shootings and, and things like that. And for example, my husband is very, very in touch with the community, very in touch with things like that, the environment and what's going on. And he used to always tell me, it seemed like every other day he was telling me about another police shooting, another you know, black person being killed that didn't have, you know, wasn't armed or a kid being killed in the park who had a toy gun. I mean, it seemed like every day. And I said, stop telling me. I said, because all of that right now is a distraction from me trying to get to where I'm trying to get to. And it's not that I'm trying to keep my head in the sand and act like all these horrible things are not happening in my community. It's the fact that me knowing about it does not help me and I can't do anything about it. The only thing that I have control over is making this money so that me and my family don't have to be in a zip code where these things are happening. Because if you know, like I know, a lot of these things are happening in certain, certain neighborhoods. And the only thing I have control over is to get my family in a position where we don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. You guys picking up what I'm putting down? Or is this going above somebody's head? Okay, you guys are getting it. Okay, okay, right. So guys, those of you that show up on this training each and every week, I know you guys are serious about your business. And so the biggest thing that I can tell you is work like a dog now so you don't get treated like one later. That is what I want you guys to write down. Work like a dog now so you don't get treated like one later because that's what's happening to a lot of people. And I don't want any of us or anybody who is connected with me in this opportunity to miss out and be treated like a dog later because they were distracted right now when they should be running like their hair is on fire. I don't want that for any of you. So please, please, please stay out of the drama zone. Don't get caught up in the he said, she said. Keep it business. Keep it business. And there's a certain level of business maturity that a lot of us have to go through. Some of us are not there yet. It's okay, but I want you to be aware of it. My role as your coach, as your director, is to stretch you and to coach, train, and develop you and get you ready for your next level. So this is that kind of conversation to help you guys get there. Again, work like a dog now so you don't get treated like one later. And last but not least, and Kemet, was there anything you wanted to add to that before I move on? That was my favorite quote, and I'm trying to remember if Mr. Moore said that or if it was Mr. Bradley yesterday. 
Do you yeah, remember? I don't remember. Uh uh. One of, yeah, one of them said it, and I was just like, oh, yeah, that's fire. I was like, that's going to be uh, my next post. But, um, no, every, everything that you hit on that was definitely on point. And the drama zone could be a lot. Um, how, do you know, how do you know, Joy? You was there? Joy said it was Mr. Moore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, one everywhere. Of the, you got to be know, careful. <laughs> She, um, one of the things, um, when we say drama zone, it could be any and everything, right? It could be something so simple to something so major, right? Um, just stuff that, you know, and that's just, that's just, um, uh, she said he says it in his lives. Thank you, Joy. Um, so that's just something that you have to be wary of, right? Because the only time the devil attacks is when you're succeeding. Mm. Mm. right so i want you guys to remember that that's what it's not when it's not when you you um haven't done so i read that this morning in, in one of my books that i was reading um but that that's when the devil attacks it's when you are succeeding it's never when you're down right it's when it's when you're up and that's what you that's why you always have to be so alert of your surroundings right? Stay in your own zone, stay in your lane and be focused. Focus is key, right? Follow one course until successful because that is what is going to drive you. Each and every one of you partnered with somebody in this business, whether um, it was myself, Tanisha, or, or whoever your upline um, gold builder is or something like that, right? You partnered with somebody and there was a reason you did it, right? You had a why. Everybody has a why. And you, that why has to drive you to your next level. No matter how tight, right? There's days, I, I'm talking to Tanisha this morning, I'm exhausted, at, right? Because just from back to back, but, but it doesn't stop me, right? If somebody, if, you know, somebody calls, hey, can I, right? She, I, I told her I was exhausted. She's like, well, can you help me do the call tonight? I'm like, seriously? Of course I can, right? Because I'm not going to say no. It's for everybody's success. Everybody's tied to everybody. So that's one of the things, um, that I will definitely stress is when when I when we say stay out of the drama zone, it's everything, right? Everything that could be a distraction to you, you gotta stay clear until right, because then you're gonna literally see the road and you're gonna be like, well, should I still keep going or what? Well, you know, there's a little ditch I could turn right here. No, just keep going, right? The ditch is a distraction. Keep going. Doesn't it's like when you're driving on 95 and you see the police cars pulled over. 54 lanes over, but you still want to be nosy and look and hold up traffic. Mm. Stay in your lane, right? This way, this just keep going. That has nothing to do with you. Pray for whoever got into the accident. Keep it moving. Right. Back to you. Mm. Yes. And last but not least, Mr. Bradley said this. He said, somebody asked him, how did you get to the top? And this was so powerful. He said, I just kept going when everybody else stopped. Think about that. How are you going to get to the top? The only ones that are on the line right now that are going to get to the top are the ones who don't quit. There are going to be people who quit along the way. There are going to be people who stop along the way. There are going to be people who are grabbing you at your ankles, trying to pull you down, but you can't stop. You got to keep going. Your best friend you bring in the business, if they quit, you got to keep going. Your brother, your sister, you bring in the business, they may quit, but you got to keep going. Your spouse that you brought into the business might quit. You have to keep going. That is how you get to the top. As Nick said, that's being relentless. Exactly. You have to be relentless. All right, now I wanna to get to the, the last topic. Um, wanna to make sure that you guys are using the updated Just Ask Peak Interest script. How many of you saw that? That I updated the Just Ask Peak Interest script to include the new videos, which I am so, so excited about. Those new videos are fire. I love them. Okay. So the one thing, um, everyone's saying me, I got it, I got it, great, great. Joy, Natalie, Mildred, Dolores, excellent, excellent, excellent. Everybody got it. Gwena said I saw it, Katrina, Nick, 
Janine, Maria, Martina, James. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So the one thing that I kind of tweaked it a little bit um, is make sure you're sending it from, even though I included the actual links in the script, go ahead and send it from the app so that the app can track if your person is watching the video. I kind of just labeled it in there for you um, so that you know exactly which videos they were, but I do want and encourage all of you, you guys can do whatever you wanna do, but I wanna encourage you to still send the videos to them from your mobile app, which you are paying for every single month so that you can track who's watching the videos. Okay, so even though it's in the script with the link, go ahead and send it from your mobile app so that the app can uh, track who is watching the videos. And that makes it so much easier to follow up. Another thing about follow up, I'm going to share my screen for a second because I want to show you guys something. How many of you have an issue with following up? You haven't quite come up with a good system and you just have there's a whole bunch of people you're prospecting but your follow-up leaves a lot to be desired <laughs> I'm still making progress on that one I'm getting to that yep Maria said me James said me Katrina says me yeah so I added in the script just a little something something that I personally started doing um, to help me with follow-up. And I don't know how many of you actually caught this. Um, okay, so you're sending out your Just Ask Peak Interest, right? So, and I made a tweak to this as well, only because I am prospecting on LinkedIn. And remember we talked uh, last week about LinkedIn being, you know, professionals. It's loaded with professionals, CEOs and vice presidents of this, that, and the other. And we talked about how they're not necessarily looking for extra money, but the one thing they don't have is residual income. So I kind of tweaked this for me to say, um, if you're at all open to what it is that I'm doing to make some extra money and create residual income. So I did that for mine. You don't have to do that for yours, but I'm just sharing with you all what I do. Um, do whatever you feel your audience is going to be receptive to. But again, I tweak mine because I'm now working on LinkedIn more than I am on Facebook. And people on LinkedIn are going to be more responsive to the word residual income than they are to just some extra money. Okay, so then once the person says, yes, I'm open, I'm interested, I say, great, I have an appointment I have to get ready for right now, but if I send you a quick video, how soon can you watch it? This is where I added an extra step for myself to do the follow-up. If they say I can watch it now, and I know I'm not gonna call them right now, I'm immediately going to my cell phone calendar and I'm gonna put that person on an appointment for today to follow up with them maybe in an hour, right? Or whatever. If they say, oh, well, I'm at work right now, I can watch it tonight, then I'm immediately gonna put that person on my phone calendar to follow up with them either first thing in the morning or later on tonight. So anytime I'm about to send the video, I put that person on my calendar for a follow-up. Because for me personally, if it's not on my calendar, it's like it never happened or it's not gonna happen. I don't know if you guys have that same experience, but I'm very, very good at doing whatever my calendar tells me to do. So I had to figure out a way, how do I get these appointments on my calendar, even if they have not scheduled a three-way call with me? If you see, at this particular point, all they told me was that they're interested. I don't know if they're gonna give me their phone number at this point, I don't know. But if they're telling me when they can watch it, I'm gonna get that video to them and I'm gonna put them on my calendar for the follow-up. So here for me, here is where, why I didn't have, this is why I have these links 
without sending it through the app. Because if this person tells me, yes, I'm interested, I'm open to hearing, and I say, great, you know, if I send you a quick video, how soon can you watch it? And they tell me, well, I can watch it now. I'm going to go ahead and send them the video. And now that we have these previews, I'm going to go ahead and send them this video, even though I haven't scheduled a three-way call. I'm going to add them to my calendar for the follow-up, right? They told me they could watch it now. I'm going to put them on my calendar, follow up with Jane Smith, you know, one hour from now. And then I'm going to find out, I'm going to follow up with her an hour later and say, after having watched the videos, is this something you'd be interested in learning more about? Now, if she tells me yes, now I'm going to schedule the call. I'm going to get her phone number. Um, you know, I'm going to lock in that three-way call. And once the appointment is set, now I'm going to go to my mobile app and send her the big picture video. You guys following me with that? So I may or may not get a three-way call immediately, the appointment, but it's okay. I'm only sending them the previews, right? The, pre the preview ITA and the preview rep to find out if they're even interested. So it's like, a, this is kind of your pre-qualifying videos. We're going to pre-qualify them. We're going to give them just a preview of our ITA and just a preview of our rep product. And then if they pass, that first qualification, then I'm gonna go in and set the three-way call and then send them the big picture, which is the 10-minute video that explains everything and how it works. Okay, any comments about that? I lost you guys, here we go. Does that make sense to you all? Okay, April says, yes, it does. Janine said, yes. Tyra says, yes. Natalie says, yes. Dino says, yes, definitely. Okay, great, 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 great. And how many of you were at Blackout this weekend? How many of you were at Blackout in Atlanta? Okay, Martina, do you remember Mr. Bradley or I believe someone talked about how to use the videos? So, and what I, my question to you, Martina, is what I just shared, does that go in alignment with Mr. Bradley, what he was saying about how to use the videos? You can unmute yourself, Martina. Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So what, what okay. did Mr. Bradley say about it? Um, first, you send out, well, it just depends on the conversation, really, that you're having with them. Um, send out the peak ITA video first, if they're interested. Then you send out the other ITA video first. And the same with the rep video. OK, so he was still saying send out the the smaller videos first to see if they're interested and then if they're you know if they still seem interested to save the big picture for for the end right 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 okay okay so the way mr bradley he he was doing it based on having a conversation with someone right we're using this through sending messenger so it's it's going to be a little different but what he's saying makes total sense right if you're having a conversation with someone you're going to kind of know where their head is because you have a lot of you know, a lot more information you're asking them questions you're in, you know you have something but we're using a script that we're sending to someone that we may have never had a conversation for so that's kind of what why i formatted it the way that i did still the same concept we're still going to qualify them with the preview videos and then once they're qualified and we know that they're interested, it makes sense to them, but they want to know more, then we're going to hit them with the one-two punch, which is the big picture video. Does that make sense to everyone? As Nick said, yes, that weeds out who's not serious. Exactly, exactly. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you guys, um, I want to talk about, I want you, and, and we, we went over this, I think, or either I had a conversation with someone, I can't remember, but I'm going to just tell you guys about it anyway. Um, I want you guys to be able to really narrow down who you're sending your just ask peak interest to. Um, some of you might be just, you know, working off of your friends list, but I want you to really work off of uh, better quality people. Cause at one point we were just friending anybody and everybody just to get our numbers up, right? We just wanted to get to 5,000 friends as quick as possible so that we had more people to market our business to. Well, now that you have, you know, three, 4,000 people, you're sending the just as peak interest to those people and they might not be great prospects, right? You might have a lot of people that you're sending it to and they're not responding. Um, they don't show up for their appointments, you know. So I want you guys to think about any special interests that you have. So if you have a special interest, I want you to type it in the chat. What type of things are you into? Special interests. And then I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you um, how to work your special interest and turn it into a profit for you. Okay, so here's a perfect one. Uh, all right, I see a lot of them. Keep them coming, keep them coming. I'm gonna pick one of these. What kind of crafts, Joy? Okay, trucking. Someone in our business owns a trucking business. Actually, we have a, a couple of people who own trucking businesses. So, I, if I own a trucking business, I'm going to, do a search for groups on Facebook. Can you guys see my screen? Just wanna make sure before I keep going. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna do a search. Okay, look at this one. Dump truck and trailer business owners and employees. There are 3,500 members. So Maria, Maria owns a trucking business. So I'm going to encourage Maria to join this group that has 3.5 thousand members in it. Um, here's one, heavy vehicle business owners. Well, that only has one person in it. We don't want to join that one. All right. So this one, this is enough, right, Maria? 3.3 thousand, you can work that group for a while. So Maria's gonna join this group and because she owns a trucking business, would you all agree that it's gonna be really easy for Maria to engage in this group, right? To offer advice, to comment on people's posts, to like people's posts genuinely because this is an area of interest for her. Would you guys agree with that? Absolutely, right? Everybody says yes. So now that Maria's in this group, she's kind of, I'm not going to say she's made a name for herself, but people know who she is because she's engaging in this group. Now, when Maria private messaged these 3,000 members and says, hey, I know we don't really know each other, but I just want to reach out to see if you were at all open to what it is that I'm doing to earn some extra income in addition to owning a trucking business. If you'd be happy, if you're interested, I'll be happy to share a little information. If not, it's totally cool being connected with you in the dump truck and trailer business owners and employees group. You see what I did there? She's in a business owner group 
but she's saying to them, if you were at all open to what it is I'm doing to make some extra money and create residual income outside of the trucking business without it interfering with what you're currently doing, blah, 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 blah. Nice being connected with you in the, and then she identifies the group. She's already having a relationship with this person because she's in the group, right? So that's her building rapport is by liking and commenting and engaging in the group, which makes it that much easier, right? Because now that person she prospected, they see that she's in a group that they're in. She's already identified that she's a dump truck, I'm sorry, a truck business owner. How likely, or is it, would you agree that it's more likely that they're going to be open to hearing what she has to say because she's one of them? Would you guys agree with that? As opposed to her just randomly messaging anybody, right? They're more likely going to say, oh, this person owns a trucking business. They're in this trucking group just like I am. And, you know, they're telling me there's a way for me to make even more money outside of my trucking business. Yes, I'm going to be open. And then now when she schedules a three-way call, do you think it's more likely they're going to show up for the three-way call because they have someone who, right? That's, that's what this is all about. And you can take any special interest you have. So another special interest that someone had brought up um, pet adoption. How many of you love pets? Maybe you have a dog that you've adopted or a cat that you've adopted, right? Natalie says me, right? So same thing. You can do pet adoption. And oh my gosh, the amount of groups that are going to have to do with pet adoption is out of control. And this particular person I was talking to was in the process of adopting a pet. So it's great for her to join all of these pet groups and you ain't going to come up with any group that has less than 4,000 people in it, right? So here's 4,200, 4,800, 8 thousand eight hundred members four thousand four thousand two thousand two thousand four thousand three thousand thirty three thousand members in all things pets from va to pa if you are a pet lover if you are looking to adopt a pet if you own a pet if you've adopted a pet you can join all of these groups and comfortably engage in these groups, right? You're gonna like the post, you're gonna start posting in the groups. I mean, you'll probably learn something from this, but it'll be a genuine you engaging in a group and not a forced engaging in the group, right? Where you, you know, you're have a hidden agenda, even though we do, but that's that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying get something out of it for yourself that you're already interested in. So now you're going to all things pets from VA to PA and you private message. Hi, how are you? I know we don't really know each other, but just wanted to reach out to see if you were at all open to what it is that I'm doing to make some extra money and create residual income so that I can buy more stuff for my pets. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say there right? Without it, current, without it interfering with what you're doing. If you're open to it, I'd be happy to share a little more info. If not, no worries. It's totally cool being connected with you in the All Things Pets from VA to PA group, right? I bet if we go in this group, because it has buy and sell, um, if you own a pet, you know some of those things you want to buy for your pet are expensive, including pet food, especially if it's gourmet, right? Or carriers or crates. And I mean, there's just so many things. People, people get, you know, crazy with the whole pet thing, right? But again, it's going to make you a lot, make it a lot easier for you to engage in that group. All right. I'm going to go to the, con the chat and see if there's any questions or comments about that. Tanisha, I want to answer, uh, clarify divorce's question. Okay. Um, she asked uh, if we would get in trouble by posting in those groups. He's you guys, prospecting. 
huh? Prospecting. Right. So you never want to no, you right. So you never want to put your put up anything that about our channel business in anybody's group ever, right? You always want to just like she says, have the conversation, comment, like their post, whatever the case would be, engage. But then if you're gonna hit somebody up that has liked something, then you wanna do that in a separate private message. It should never be something that you just talk about like that. Does right. that make sense, of course? Right, exactly, exactly. I don't know if she's still on or not, but I wanted to clarify that. Yep, yep, that was great. Thank you, Kim Matt. Uh, Joy said, I wonder if they have, a oh, Dwar said, yes, yeah, she gets it. Okay, great, 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 great. Joy said, I wonder if they have a group for people who are allergic to dogs and cats. Well, they might. They might. I don't know, Joy. I'm not going to look look up that one right now. Because uh, if you're allergic to a dog or a cat, then you're going to not have one in your home. Um, but some of the other... Let's look up someone someone else's interests. Uh, Gwina, perfect, perfect. Lupus, if you have, or someone in your family, now I can't spell it, lupus has a illness or some type of disease. I mean, there's lupus, there's MS, there's cancer, there's, I mean, it goes on and on and on. I promise you there is a group for it. So if you are someone who is dealing with a medical condition, look for a support group for that condition. So we got 5,000 people in this, in this group, 11,000, 17,000, right? 1,000, 64,000 in this fibromyalgia solutions and support. Oh my gosh. So here's the thing that I absolutely love about these types of groups, especially with a medical condition, because you can really tweak this and say, hi, hi, how are you? I know we don't really know each other, but I just wanted to reach out to see if you were at all open to what it is that I'm doing to make some extra money, create residual income from home since I'm not able to work because of my lupus condition, or if that's the case, right? There are a lot of people who have medical conditions where they're on disability because they can't work. Their medical condition prevents them from working, or they can only do certain work from home jobs or jobs that have, you know, that special, you know, that are going to be more flexible. And so you can really tweak this just as peak interest this this intro to really speak to that do you know you know are you interested in what i'm doing to earn some extra income because i can't work at a job because of my condition if you're open to it i'd be happy to share a little more information if not no worries it's totally cool being connected with you in the lupus awareness and support group right you see that or maybe there is some experimental drug or something that you know is out there that is super 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 expensive and you know you're working towards making the money to be able to pay for it right or some type of treatment or something i mean you the sky is the limit for special interest to be used um horses dance festivals music i mean it's endless, guys. It's endless. Maria says she joined one for step parents. That is awesome. That's a great one. I'm sure there's no shortage of groups for step parents. Right? Uh, Divorce says, I love this. I really was having a hard time figuring out this um, whole group friend adding and where to post income posts. Great ideas. Awesome. I'm glad that this is helping you, Divorce. I'm telling you, as I, as I work this business, I, I, I'm always coming up with ideas. Things just hit me. Literally, it's like usually in the wee hours in the morning, and then I get up and take my phone, and I'm under the cover, so I'm not waking my husband up. <laughs> but, I mean, you can really just go crazy with this. If you like music, 
maybe live music, maybe you play an instrument, right? And think about some of the hobbies that some of you may have. Usually a really good hobby is expensive, right? Let's say you like quilting or crocheting. Um, you could be joining groups that have to do with that. And again, just tweak your peak interest. If you are at all open to what it is I'm doing to earn some extra income to support my quilting hobby, right? To earn some extra income to support my crocheting hobby, to earn some extra income to support my golfing, um, my golfing hobby, to support my singing career, to support my acting career, what I'm doing to earn some extra income to help pay for college, right? Maybe you are in a group for parents with children going to school or going to a particular college, or uh, maybe you are a parent of, oh, here's one. If your kids play sports, cheerleading competitions, AAU basketball, and you start joining the parent groups for those sports. Wanted to reach out to see if you were at all open to what it is I'm doing to earn some extra income to pay for cheerleading competitions. I mean, the, the possibilities, guys, are endless. And the best part is you have a genuine interest for it. You have a genuine interest, so it makes it easier to engage. So that is it for tonight i'm sorry i went over it's 904 before i end this um training do you guys have any questions any comments go ahead and unmute yourself no questions was this helpful did you guys enjoy tonight's training and all the information that was shared maria yes, said yes. thank you camet Katrina said, yes. Mildred said, greatly appreciate it. Dino said, yes, very much. Dolores said, very. Gina said, very helpful. Nick said, great training and review. Thank you. Joy said, yes. Divorce gave me two thumbs up. Thank you, Divorce. Weena said, thank you for this breakdown and candid conversation. April said, yes. James said, yes, thank you. Janine said, yes, as always. Natalie said, yes, good training. Thank, Mildred said, thank you, Cam, Matt, and Tanisha. April said, thanks. Thank you, thank you. So, all right, so that concludes the training. Thank you so much, Cam, Matt, for uh, co-hosting this training with me. Really appreciated your feedback and all that you share and always appreciate the candid conversation with you. <laughs> you owe me $5. I got you. you, I got you, I got you. All right, guys, let's go get it. Stay focused, stay focused, stay focused, stay out of the drama zone and in your money zone. Um, stay focused, work hard, work like a dog now so you don't have to be treated like one later. This concludes the training for tonight. God bless and good night. Good night and you're welcome everybody.